My name is Rich Heller, and our paper is titled Current Controversies in Radiology on Cost, Reimbursement, and Price Transparency, AJR Expert Panel Narrative Review. It's a big title, because, well, it's a big subject and a big paper. I never thought we'd get close to the 100 reference limit, but in the end, we worked to get it down to 97 different citations. Hopefully, that list will also serve as a useful reference. The paper analyzes three different but interrelated issues, cost, reimbursement, and price transparency. For this video, I'm going to focus on one aspect, reimbursement, and a question I hear asked frequently. Why does it feel like radiology is continually being threatened with reimbursement reductions? Well, first, is it even true? What's been happening to medical imaging reimbursement? Steady declines. What we see are years of declining payment. The abrupt decline you see in 2007 was due to the Deficit Reduction Act. We have seen these declines continue and cross imaging modalities. From 2007 to 2019, reductions in Medicare reimbursement were seen across the spectrum of modalities. So the answer is yes. We are seeing a theme of cuts to Medicare reimbursement for medical imaging. But why are we seeing these cuts? Well, let's back up a bit and start with this. Since the 1970s, the United States has spent more money per capita on healthcare than other nations. Even compared to other high income nations, the US spends a greater fraction of their gross domestic product, GDP, on healthcare. But what are we getting for all that spending? Well, looking at population health outcomes, for life expectancy, and this is compared to other high income nations, we're the worst. But for health adjusted life expectancy, well, we were also the worst. Maternal mortality, worst. Neonatal mortality, worst. Infant mortality, you're getting a trend, worst. In 2012, the Institute of Medicine, which is now the National Academy of Medicine, recommended that the Secretary of Health and Human Services set specific targets and aim to achieve parity with averages among comparable nations on healthy life expectancy and per capita health expenditures by 2030. They gave themselves almost two decades to reduce per capita health spending and improve performance. That was in 2012. Instead, US healthcare spending has continued to grow. In 2020, it grew 9.7%, topping $4 trillion, consuming almost 20% of our gross domestic product. Due to these rising national expenditures on healthcare, as well as continued poor performance on key population health metrics and numerous other factors, Many believe that fundamental reform of the U.S. healthcare system is necessary. But how should we reform the system? How can we limit spending while promoting population health? One group, the Medicare Payment Advisory Commission, or MedPAC, an independent congressional agency that advises Congress on Medicare policy, believes that part of the reform includes redistribution of reimbursement away from specialties like radiology as a mechanism to support primary care. In 2021, they wrote that median compensation in 2019 remains much lower for primary care physicians than for physicians in certain other specialties, such as radiology. Underscoring concerns about the mispricing of fee schedule services and its impact on primary care. Knowing that MedPAC believes that certain specialties, like radiology, are overcompensated relative to primary care, what have Medicare policies looked like for the past decade? Well, every year, CMS issues their final rule on the Medicare fee schedule. It details Medicare policies for the coming year. Now, in that rule, they include something called an impact table, which estimates the Medicare reimbursement impact on the various specialties. Looking back at a decade of Medicare final rule impact tables, we see that radiology has been a mirror image of sorts relative to primary care. The big question, is this the best approach to achieve our nation's goals? It's true the U.S. spends a lot on health care and our population health outcomes are lagging. But is radiology to blame? We set an analysis in the paper from the Neiman Health Policy Institute that radiology professional services are a small percentage of overall Medicare fee schedule spending, representing less than 3% of payments in 2019. Yet radiology is a leader in care provided to Medicare beneficiaries and an essential part of integrated care delivery. But consider this, some say that up to 20% of healthcare spending is on low value care. In one study that reviewed 32 examples of low value care, more than a third of the examples involved medical imaging. But will continually cutting radiology and medical imaging improve performance? 
And are there potential unintended consequences of these reductions? We face very real healthcare challenges. Are they entirely or even mostly due to radiology? I don't think so. But said differently, can radiology help reduce low value care? Yes, I think we can. Our paper attempts to contextualize these questions, as well as the important and related issues of cost and price transparency. On behalf of myself and my co-authors, I hope you enjoy the paper. Thank you.